Okay, so today we will uh, take up uh, the so called aspects of structural requirement for these main structures, means the type of shapes, the offset structures we have talked about yesterday in the last lectures, we will uh, uh, discuss about the structural requirement. I mean why this structural requirement, why you are talking about this? Because if you look into the uh, basic objective is yes, that you want to produce, uh, you want to manufacture a kind of product which will serve some purpose obviously. One is uh, manufacturing something because he expects some functions from it, right? And he expects the functions to be carried out as efficient as possible by that said product. Now, here our products are, well, some of the products are uh, sort of, uh, uh, I mean one can say floating vessels which are meant for transportation of cargo. Some products are which are, uh, which will assist in this transportation of cargo that means assist in operation of those vessels which we refer to as the support vessels. Then the, there are some products we talked about the offshore platforms for offshore exploration, offshore sort of oil exploration. So, such that these products they deliver the required level of uh, satisfaction to the clients. What we need? We need that it should function perfectly in all the aspects. What are the aspects like? As far as ships are concerned, aspects would be, as I said, the client wants a certain capacity, he wants a certain speed. So, these things are determined by the, well, the capacity is determined by the very geometry of the thing, that how big the hold you are providing, whether you are providing the right size of the hold to carry the right amount of cargo. Then speed, well, it has the hydrodynamic aspects that uh, whether you have taken the correct hydrodynamic uh, features, you have incorporated the right kind of hydrodynamic features in the hull form such that it, uh, it gives you the desired speed at the minimum power because well if it is badly designed then still you may derive the speed but the power may be very high. If the power is high naturally the owner is not happy because you will have to burn more fuel, so more expenses. So, these are understood. What is the next? Next is the client also wants that his cargo is delivered safely in a safe and sound manner. That means, the structure which is carrying this, all the serving these functions, a ship carrying the cargo, a offshore platform housing all the machineries and equipment for offshore drilling operations or exploration operation should have sufficient strength to withstand all the service loads. That means, we should be able to design a structure and subsequently fabricate, construct it such that it withstands the service loads. Why you call service loads? Because the loads which the structure is going to encounter while rendering the desired service. Because when you build the ship, for example, it is in the uh, so called in the sh shipyard, in the dry dock not yet floated out, it may uh, behave perfectly, behave means structurally, it is not uh, being used, it is just static standing there, but when you put it in water, then it will, it may behave in a different fashion, because the load distribution has changed. When it was sitting in the dry dock, the entire load was supported at certain points, because the over the kill blocks, right? And uh, and when the uh, ship is floated out, then it is supported by buoyancy. So the load distribution is changing. Now when you are loading it, fully loaded, then again the load distribution is changing. When it is coming back, say, uh, uh, or suppose it is touching intermediate port, discharging some cargo it is going half loaded, again the loading pattern is changing. So, the structure should be able to withstand all kinds of service conditions, right. And also suppose it is sailing in the nice winter days, 
I mean Indian winter days. So, the seas are calm and quiet. There is no additional, I mean no storm, nothing. So, that is one situation of service condition. It may be the other heavy stormy, very stormy weather. So, it will encounter huge waves. So, that is another loading condition. That is also a, a service condition. So, service load that means a structure is always designed considering the worst possible service condition, worst possible loading condition it may encounter in its lifespan. That is how a structure is always designed. Okay, so that is how uh, one will look at it, look at the loads, and then one identifies what are the loads which are going to come. Right? Well, to be very uh, brief, loads will be essentially the static load of the structure, its own load. Like you design a beam, a, suppose a cantilever beam, right? And you hold uh, a cantilever beam, you hold at one end, the beam may sag out of its own weight. Right? That means, it is a deflection, it is failing sort of, it is supposed to remain straight, but it is bending. That means, the that particular structure has failed under its own weight. And then, the other uh, other situations come when there is other loads are acting. Right? So, that is how the static load, then the cargo load, the buoyancy load, the wind load, the wave load, all kinds of loads. So, all these loads taken together it will call for strengthening the structure against certain precise requirement. So, those requirements can be written as longitudinal strength, right, because otherwise uh, as you can see the ship structure uh, as far as uh, if we consider a ship structure or a offshore platform, it will be encountered by loads from all directions, right. And that will have effects, all kinds of effects. One of the effect could be longitudinal bending. The ship is undergoing a longitudinal, a, a bending moment and the along, along the length, it is undergoing a bending moment, right. There can be a situation, it is undergoing a twisting moment and so and so forth there can be situation that it is undergoing a severe local loading. The severe local loading could be for example, the place where you have installed the main engine of a ship. You know the ships, the engine power can range anything from I mean so to say 2000 horsepower to 100,000 horsepower. Imagine the very big ones or even the small ones immaterial because if it is a 2000 horsepower engine. <coughs> it is located at a in a small region. So, very concentrated loads are acting. If it is a 50,000 horsepower engine, also same thing the engine size is a little bigger. Again the load distributed over that, but a concentrated weight is acting there. The ship is sailing in the sea and it is encountering little rough weather and it starts executing a slamming motion. Slamming motion means it goes and it keeps heating the water. So, that is a local load at the forward, right, that is a slamming load. So, all these loads will give rise to different kinds of stresses in the structure. So, that makes things very complicated. So, to simplify things, we will look, we will divide them in certain uh, precise requirement like longitudinal strength requirement, then transverse strength requirement. Then uh, torsional strength and local strength. So, that means we will try to design a structure or we will try, try to make a structural arrangement which should be able to provide necessary strength against longitudinal loads, transverse loads, torsional loads and local loads, right. That is the idea. And so, 
well some of the examples how the long longitudinal like i was telling longitudinal bending what happens say a ship is a ship structure or a ship hull is generally considered as a equivalent to a beam beam the thing is the uh, uh, typical feature of a beam is it has a very high l by b ratio length to breadth ratio right so shape is also somewhat similar to that of a beam anyway so how it can suffer uh, say uh, longitudinal loads like when it is sailing there can be cases of waves it's encountering like this if the wave is like this then as we can see the buoyancy at these points are higher right because the wave crests are at the forward and the aft and somehow suppose the situation become worse if you have engine room somewhere located here that means in a semi aft region semi aft because it's preferable to have the engine as aft as possible but there can be some cases where you cannot put it fully aft aft means on the back side of the ship so you put it semi aft so what happens this gives me a concentrated loading so this this is one of the situation where you have a heavy bending moment acting on the vessel and the bending moment of this pattern right this is what is called sagging bending moment right this wave profile will lead to a sagging bending moment that means sags in between as if right the just opposite to this would be a situation suppose a wave profile like this right and as i said it's preferable to have the engine room as aft as possible and let us assume in this particular ship you have the engine room absolutely aft so you have a concentrated loading here and in this case not only engine room in the previous case also they say the cargo holds are full the middle cargo holds there are cargo holds there so all these are putting load so this is a equivalent case of as if it is supported at the ends and all loads are acting at the major loads are acting at the middle so it gives a very heavy, heavy bending moment in this case just the opposite the buoyancy is more and assume the vessel is coming half empty right can be a situation half the cargo it has delivered it's going half empty so right so in this case it is just the opposite just the opposite means it is as if supported at the middle and being acted upon by like this so it gives a hogging bending moment this is referred to as hogging bending moment in any case these are the extreme cases not necessarily always a ship will encounter one of these but it can be a combination of this whatever so this gives rise to a severe longitudinal bending moment so we we'll have to design the structure such that the longitudinal bending moment does not give rise to stresses which may lead to failure what kind of failure it can cause in these two types of uh, bending say this is my case one sagging uh, condition case two is a hogging condition what may happen if a, if a vessel <coughs> suffers extreme sagging condition will it really break if if it breaks where from the uh, failure will start because every time you will know any structural failure it has a initiation point from there the failure propagates failure can be just a minute failure can be of two types one is a failure due to formation of a crack and the crack propagates so it breaks in two pieces right or i mean not necessarily to uh, to uh, fully it separated in two pieces but a severe crack develops and renders the object non functional or there can be buckling failure 
because if a structure buckles that is also taken as failure because once it has buckled means it has lost is load bearing capacity it, it cannot sustain load right so that is also a failure so now on that basis you tell me in case 1 what kind of failures are expected and where where it will initiate Buckling where? Why semi aft region? Why not more in the middle region? Buckling is due to what? Why buckling takes place? Because of compressive, because of compressive stresses, right? Because of compressive load. You, you, if I can, if you remember those Euler buckling, right? a column being compressed. So, it can buckle, there can be different buckle, uh, I mean modes of buckling. If, if the, from the Euler column formula, if you remember, you have studied probably, that if it exceeds the stress, the critical buckling stress, right. So, then it will buckle. Once it has buckled means what? What does that mean? That means, any delta increment in the load, it will go on deflecting or deforming. That means, it does not have any more strength to sustain any further load. Right. It will continue to deform sort of. Anyway, so here buckling would be expected at the mid region, approximately the mid region, because the bending is in this mode as I have drawn. So, the deck plating will be in under compression is not it. So, the deck plate if it buckles obviously, there will be tension in the kill plate is not it. The kill plate will be under tension. Now, naturally the stresses at the deck level will be little higher compared to the stresses at the kill plate. Why? Because if you see the a cross section at the midship region. a cross section at the midship region, say the ship midship region is somewhat like this, because of the structural arrangements inside which we will look later, it will give rise to a K situation of position of neutral axis somewhere here. That means, closer to the bottom. Why? Because the bottom is more heavily strengthened, more heavily structured. Right? So, that leads to neutral axis closer to the lower side. If that is so, then what happens? The sigma deck is will be rather always higher compared to the sigma keel for a given bending moment. For a given bending moment, the stresses developing at the deck will be greater than stresses developing at the keel what are the stresses, how, how we get these stresses. Suppose, we know this, because of this bending, this say sagging condition or the hogging condition, I have the bending moment. Let us assume that I could calculate or I could assess the bending moment. Then from this, how do I get the stress, which, which will be acting because of bending moment, there will be some stress generated at the deck plate or the kill plate or the overall structure. Why I am only bothered about primarily with the deck and the kill? That is the position where, it is the position where the maximum values of stress will occur. So, that may lead to failure. So, if that does not fail, then obviously, any other structure in between will not fail. So, we are only that is why bothered about the extreme members which will undergo most severe stressed conditions. So, how, what the stress would be at the deck for a given bending moment m? That means, sigma deck will be, how do we calculate? A simple, you are right, it is simply m by i by y, right? That i by y is the section modulus of this. That is why later you will see, when you design a structure, we check the section <laughs> modulus primarily at the midship region, because midship region is the region where you have the maximum bending moment. For all kinds of loading conditions 
as far as lo longitudinal strength is concerned right the generally the bending moment pattern would be somewhat like this you will have in the midship region the maximum bending moment it tapers off and obviously zero at the ends all right so in any case that's how we'll check the bending moment we'll check the stress levels at the midship region i'm talking about midship region means this length is this is my midship position right this is l by 4 and this is l by 4 this region is referred to as midship region l is the length overall length overall one fourth length aft of midship one fourth length forward of midship so that region that half length of the ship is referred to as the midship region because not necessarily exactly at the midpoint of the vessel you will have the maximum stress you will have within that zone that is why all the structural arrangements what is done will be same identical in this zone what does that imply that implies that whatever is the deck plating thickness at this region will also be in the same this region also in this region that means over this l by 4 forward and aft the structural dimensions the st structural dimensions in our terminology is referred to as scantlings these are certain terms some nomenclature scantling this term is used scantling scantlings is nothing but like if i say what are the scantlings so that will imply what is the deck plating thickness what is the stiffener dimension what is the i mean all those structural dimensions right so the scantling will remain constant over this region right even constant means well the shape may change the hull form may change depending on the type of the hull etc the hull form from this point to this point may change but the structural arrangement the structural scantlings will remain same right anyway so again coming back to this we see that here we have the stresses at keel deck is this i by y this y is y deck isn't it because this is the distance and this is my y keel so obviously this uh, this value the stress at the deck will be higher than the stress at the keel because your, your y keel is less than y deck generally so so that is how we, we would expect a buckling taking place in the sagging condition a buckling taking place at the deck so there can be a tearing action in the bottom shell right in the other case it is more severe the hogging is more severe why because there the deck will be in under tension deck is under tension and here if i see the if i see in terms of the deck plan how the deck of a say any of these cargo ships excepting passenger ship or a oil tanker would look somewhat like this these are let us assume different holds say this is my engine room this is hold 1 hold 2 hold 3 right so all these will have some hatch opening isn't it some opening on the deck
this is op be because you need to have some opening because through which you are going to put the cargo in. That's why I said this you will not have in case of a passenger ship. Also, you won't have in case of a rower ship. You're not going to put the car through a hold. It will have other mechanism. This also will not have in case of oil tanker because you won't pour crude oil through the hole through a big opening. Rather, you'll have pipe connections through which it will go. But rest, all other ships will have such hatch openings. So, what is happening now? In case of a hogging condition, when it is under tension, the deck plating is under tension and you have the deck huge openings. So, high level of stresses will develop in this region at the hatch corners. Why? Because of some stress concentration. You know something called stress concentration. If there is a sudden change in the cross section of a structure, sudden change. So, stress level, if the nominal stress level is say S, the at that point where there the sudden change is taking place that can be several times of S. It can be three, four times. Right? The, that is what is referred to as stress, stress concentration. So, that, that is what is expected at the hatch corners. So, in that case, there is a uh, very high probability that a crack may develop at these corners. Right? And and crack is a particular, I mean that is uh, again a particular typical uh, phenomena that if a crack develops, then it progresses and leads to failure, structural failure, right. So, in any case that is how we see that these are very important aspects that will have to have strengthening arrangement suitable such that it can sustain such longitudinal loads. So, we satisfy the longitudinal strength requirement. Then there are transverse loads coming on the ships, how the transverse loads may come. It is something like this. Transverse means perpendicular to the longitudinal direction. Say the ship is uh, floating in such condition and when it sails, it encounters all kinds of waves. There can be oblique waves coming and hitting the vessel that means hitting from this side if it is not suitably adequately transversely strengthened the structure may deform like this what i have drawn by these dotted lines <coughs> is not the structure has healed you know a term healing heal healing that is equivalent to tilting, but we do not say that a ship has tilted, we say the ship has healed, right, a healing angle. That means, when it is floating, so the ship is floating, give a force, it will heal by port side and it will keep oscillating for some time till it again comes to the optimal condition, right. Here it is not a question of healing, it is deforming, you know, it is deforming the bases remain horizontal. Healing would be the whole as a rigid body the whole thing is moving, but here the two side shells have deformed. right? So, that is what is referred to as this kind of deformation is referred to as raking. So, this may happen because of inadequate transverse strength. So, we we'll have to provide for that torsional strength. Torsional strength is a aspect the whole shape just imagine a situation if it is lack of torsional strength and it is subjected to, to this kind of torsional moment then it may deform longitudinally right. It may deform. Now, so, if it deforms, what will happen? What is the problem? In case of longitudinal, we have seen long, if longitudinal strength is not adequate, then we have seen what are the problems one can face. If the transfer strength is not adequate, well, it may rake, it may deform like this. But what is the problem? 
if it is twisted what is the problem mm, well i mean it's not that severe that it will shear off this raking also will not be that severe because we are designing it but because of some inadequacy somewhere these things may happen right most severe most conditions are the longitudinal conditions once the longitudinal strains are fully satisfied it automatically takes care some of these transverse and torsional but in certain particular cases you have to additionally look into the transverse and torsional things right so they are not that severe but in longitudinal if it fails means it breaks in two pieces or it renders totally unusable the vessel i mean totally it becomes unsafe for use but if it raking has taken place or is a little bit of torsional deformation has taken place it is not that unsafe but it has rendered your yeah, its uh, functional efficiency functional quality has gone down why yeah what happens if it has deformed like this or if the along the length you imagine a situation it has twisted so what will happen when you are selling you will never be able to sell straight you will always have a tendency to deviate from your course so if you deviate from course then what happens instead of reaching your sydney you may reach shanghai somewhere else you may land so that is not affordable so you'll have to always give a steering force to keep back bring back the vessel to the path what in the process you are doing you are consuming unnecessarily energy this part of the energy is dissipated to bring it back to the course how that is done it's basically giving a rudder angle that means that you'll have to probably give a rudder angle continuously to head straight i needed the rudder to be straight in line but now i have to give a rudder angle so that i keep my course giving a rudder angle means what i am forcing the vessel to bring back to the course where from that force is coming from my engine so at the cost of my speed so there will be drop in speed if there is a drop in speed well i may lose one round trip in the long run or if i am to bring the thing to the desired speed i have to burn more fuel if possible it's not that not like car engine that you have sufficient extra power no not always if you have then you will tend to burn i mean speed of the engine burn more fuel to uh, deliver the required speed so your economics it it's in the economics right so these are the problems so where one can have this torsional uh strength problem primarily where you know a structure a open structure is torsionally weak a closed structure is torsionally very strong right this is a case of a tanker oil tanker right where torsional problem is not a problem as such because it's a closed box kind of structure and that is very strong it's a open structure it does not have torsional strength right this is a case of container vessel so in case of container ships this torsional strength requirement is important there you have to specifically look into this specific attention is to be provided in the structural arrangement for designing container vessels right so that is what Uh, is the torsional and and the other vessels are in between general cargo ship bulk carrier and all that are in between because they are neither fully closed nor fully open they are the basically what happens i mean obviously container ship also doesn't mean that the hull will look like this fully open what it means is something like this in a if i just a schematic comparison if we do of a bulk carrier or a general cargo carrier and a container vessel the comparison of the deck opening size it would be something like this say otherwise we have identical size of the both the vessels then the deck openings 
would be somewhat like this that means the in 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 this is this is the one with general cargo bulk carrier like that this is the one the container so you you can see the opening is much bigger it is almost fully open whereas this is comparatively much smaller can you tell me why this this is and and making it much bigger open it makes all kinds of structural problems and when you make big and big and big uh, container ships so what is happening it is becoming long and slender right and and you have huge hatch openings in between so that that itself makes things even more challenging and difficult but why that is so why so big has opening and why it is small in case of a bulk carrier a bulk carrier can also be this big say 100000 ton of bulk carrier will be a huge one but you have small hatch opening because in bulk carrier the loading is well is the cargo in bulk so you have a opening you load through a sort of a hopper it just falls or use a grab to unload it right whereas in container what happens is you have to lower the containers hanging in a crane right this is how the containers will be lowered in its locations and once it is lowered here or suppose you have a small opening then what happens you lower it say somewhere in the middle region then you have to shift it left or right who will shift that how do you shift it so then the whole purpose of containerization is lost we started talking about containerization because to reduce loading unloading time that is one of the main important thing a container ship a, a container ship is uh, i mean loading unloading is done in just 2 to 3 days it's finish it hardly stays in a port right whereas a general cargo ship will stay for a month so now if we have to lower the container then maneuver it to the left or right then again the whole purpose is lost that's why you have a huge opening so you right you lower the container wherever it is to be stored and it is stacked like this one on top of the other so you need a huge opening because the whole whole space has to be utilized right so in any case that is what i was saying the functional requirement uh, uh, i mean uh, depending on the functional requirement your structural arrangement will de depend so this is one of the simple example of the functional requirement that you'll have to have a very wide hatch opening so it is almost referred to as a open deck ship right because the deck plating is so small compared to the entire breadth of the ship so it does not have much strength so you'll have to provide for adequate strengthening against torsional deformation so that is what is the the torsional strength requirement and then uh, last we are talking about the local strength right local as we have said one is well once again if we look in terms of a ship we'll give references primarily based on ships the reference of offshore platform will be very minimal because in offshore platform it's primarily this deck all decks and uh, uh, other uh, typical things are well the hugeness of its construction that's all otherwise there is no structural difference as such well in ships as far as local strength is concerned say this is my engine room so engine room means you have a say a huge main engine right so a quite a huge load is acting locally so you'll have to have proper strengthening arrangement if i do not have proper strengthening arrangement local stresses will develop right so that is the local load that means local strengthening is needed this has nothing to do with torsional load or the longitudinal bending moment or transverse loads etc similarly 
you will see we have talked about the bending moment and we saw that the bending moment is highest somehow around the midship region. So, that automatically implies the immediate effect what one can see is the shell plating thickness, the deck plating thickness will be highest in the midship region and will gradually taper off. Obviously, I, I, I will not continue the same plating thickness as we have in the middle region away from that in the forward or in the aft region for the simple reason that it will in if that way I design then the structure will be over strengthened, it will be overweight, it will be costlier. So, I will try to use here if the plate thickness is 30 millimeters say the deck plating thickness there I can afford to have a plate thickness I am just saying indicative right 20 millimeter. As I go further forward I can even come down to 16 millimeter and so on right. Same thing is true because here the bedding moment is 0 there is no load as such from longitudinal point. Same thing is true in the side shell, same thing is true in the bottom shell is not it, but we will find the bottom shell part of this a part this region or this forward end this region is also referred to as fore end forward end or fore end hmm? this region will find that the shell thickness have increased right also we will see i mean the bottom shell thickness we have increased the deck plating thickness just prior to this it was 16 and here probably again we have gone back to 20 and also we will see that in this zone it is uh, more heavily stiffened, heavily structured right. Why? Because of local loading to withstand local loads where from the local loads will come there? Yeah, because when it is sailing it is encountering waves right. Not only that in stormy seas it may start yeah doing the slamming I mean it, it may start slamming. Slamming is a motion of the vessel about its center of flotation. This is my this point is referred to as this is my say load water line at this level the vessel is floating and sailing. So, on the water plane you will have a geometrical point LCF it is called longitudinal center of flotation. So, if the ship makes any 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 movement uh, uh, this slamming motion it will be as if the ship is hinged about this LCF and making this movement. LCF will be generally will be aft of midship will be generally after midship. Why? Because the water plane is more fuller in the aft and finer in the forward right. It is finer in the forward full in the aft. So, this LCF will be obviously aft. So, if that happens that means it will have a huge moment. So, with a huge force it will be hitting the water surface that means you will have a forces acting here which are called slamming loads right these are called slamming load. So, in other words this forward end part this may experience huge loading because of this slamming and also what about the deck why you strengthen the deck also deck is not hitting the water because of slamming. What happens is in again in rough seas there can be huge waves coming and hitting and falling over the deck. If you if you if you look into I mean well you happen to some pictures you will see in a very stormy sea condition a vessel will look like well in ocean it is a small item however big it is to us here. 
and the waves can be as high as several times higher than the ship's depth. So, there can be situation the huge wave will come and hit the deck like this, right. So, that bulk of water falling on the deck, it will puncture the deck and go if it is not properly strengthened. There are accidents like that, right. So, you will have to strengthen it in the forward part. So, that is how we will see, I mean that is what is the local strength. So, that is how if we take care of this longitudinal, transverse, torsional and local these strength requirements, then we can say that well the structure is, the product is structurally sound. That means, it will safely uh, uh, transport your product from destination, I mean I mean between the destinations, between the places you want to sell or it will serve the required purpose. Well, so we have, we have talked about that these are needed. Now, how do I do that? How do I provide for the necessary strength? What is done in case of in 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 these cases in case of ships, offshore platforms, etc. Well, if we look into the uh, this uh, structures of this of the vessels, ships, as well as our offshore platforms or even submarines or any such product, what we are finding is that it needs to have adequate strength. What does the adequate strength means? That means under the service load, the stress level should be within the working limit, what about the permissible stress level limit within that, that is the number one requirement. And number two requirement is that it should be done in such a fashion that its strength to weight ratio is maximized. That means, I do not unnecessarily make the structure very heavy, I have to do it in such a fashion that its strength is, strength is high at the same time weight is not that much or in other words we have a uh, this is the particular uh, criteria that this ratio has to be maximized a good design a good structural design is where i have this maximum because how do i satisfy longitudinal strength requirement transverse strength requirement all these they are not, you know, these are not a case of a problem where you have unique solution. No, you can have several solutions depending on the designer, how you are looking at the thing. You can give your own solutions which will satisfy all these four requirements, but the one which will also satisfy this requirement, that means strength to weight ratio you have maximized or the reverse weight to strength ratio you have minimized that is the, that will be the best design sort of from structural point of view. Keeping in mind all the other requirements obviously, that means other requirements are your hydrodynamic requirement, your production requirement, your functional requirement because uh, a, a design can be very nice hydrodynamically, but it may not be absolutely suitable. It, it, it may be a very difficult design as far as production is concerned, manufacturing is concerned. At the same time, you have to keep in mind the maintenance aspect of it, right. Anyway, so we will have to maximize the strength to weight ratio. So, well, what is done here in, in, in these cases is uh, the basic structural block is the are the stiffened panels. That means, the entire structure if I really start cutting it down and take out small pieces from various arbitrary locations from the from the shape suppose I cut down a little 
piece of say 2 meter by 3 meter deck plate if I cut it off, if I cut similar patch from the shell here or shell there or a patch from the bottom shell anywhere <coughs> any piece you cut out you will find it is nothing but a stiffened panel. What a stiffened panel means? Stiffened panel means it is nothing but a piece of plate. right and you will see there some stiffeners are welded in certain fashion right you will very likely to encounter such type of panels. So, from this we can say that the entire structure is primarily built out of such stiffened panels. Only difference should be say for example, let us take a look at the one of the section. Suppose I cut a piece from here, it will be a some stiffened panel I may expect of this nature that means a plate with certain stiffeners welded. If I cut a piece from here only difference will be to the curved. So, the stiffened panels can be either flat or curved. So, we can see that the entire structure I can construct if I have such panels fabricated to the required size, shape and all that and go on putting them together you get the entire entire shape. Like analogous could be building civil I mean this uh, houses the buildings what it is made up of basic building blocks bricks one after other brick you put you get the wall. Why do not you think in terms of basic building blocks or walls. Bricks are fabricated in some brick factory. You bring them, put the bricks one after other, make the building. Similar fashion you think of a factory which is making the walls, ready made walls. Whatever is the uh, material they are using, let them use ready made walls. So, instead of buying bricks, you buy the walls and put them. The, your, your thing is done. Similar, uh, similarly here basic things are of course, the stiffness and the steel plates. The next stage we are talking that then we in house we fabricate this. They are also basic things maybe clay and sand whatever cement, but I can have a situation wherein instead of brick I can buy the walls and put the walls and make the building. Is it feasible? do not say that you are intelligent being why do why do not you think it is not feasible that is the way you can build houses very fast and that is how it is built probably not here yet, but where you need to build houses very fast there only thing what you need is a very high level of standardization right like bricks are also standard you know I mean you buy a piece of brick in Kashmir or in Kanyakumari the size is same. There are I think so two different sizes I have encountered of bricks. They are fixed 8 inch, 5 inch, 3 inch some such thing is there standard sizes. Anyway, but uh, this I mean if you can uh, there are standard sizes of walls available ready made. So, lift the wall and put it in place. So, in 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 couple of hours time your whole wall is erected. So, four walls you put maybe in one shift you erect the four walls then comes the roof slab. Only technology is joints how do you ensure the watertight strong joints that is how buildings are made I have seen building in this fashion. So, I was amazed to see because I never thought of that you need a crane to build a building because there are high rises. 
So, very high rises. So, with a crane they are just lifting these blocks and putting it in place. And it was uh, as I can recall, I mean I do not remember maybe some 21 story building it is completed in in some 9 months time or so huge that is only feasible provided you have such technologies involved right. Anyway, so similar fashion in ships also we have this different panels of course, here we do not have a stiffen panel uh, production uh, factory it is not done that way it is well the shipyard itself will produce these panels of different size shape shape means some are curved curved means how the curvature is will obviously depend on the hull form right so that is a different issue but essentially what we are seeing is that this strength uh, requirement all these will be subsequent will be actually provided by how you design these different panels right. As you can see what I have drawn here in one simple example of flat stiffen panel is I have certain stiffness in this direction say in the x axis certain I have drawn in the y axis. If x axis happens to be the longitudinal axis of the uh, well this panel goes in such a fashion in the main structure that the x axis is the along the longitudinal direction. So, then I will refer refer this panel as longitudinally stiffened right longitudinally stiffened that means longitudinally stiffened panel because they are the primary members they are much closely spaced and also I need transverse strength. So, I have two transverse members right we will come to that later again. Now, the similar situation can be in this fashion also. I have uh, members stiffening members running like this right this is my same x axis and this was my y axis. So, here I have just reversed the cases I have put closely spaced stiffness in the transverse direction and one I have kept in the longitudinal direction. So, this is a transversely framed or transversely stiffened panel this is longitudinally framed right this is transversely framed ok. So, that is the just the introduction I gave you about the longitudinally stiffened panel and the transversely stiffened panel transversely framed or stiffened panel. So, this is my longitudinal framing system, this is my transverse framing system. Now, we will see more in details in the next class.